what's up everybody today guys we're going to be creating these two poster designs a little bit artsy today <laughs> but yeah the whole basis of this tutorial is to demonstrate how to use the perspective grid in illustrator and yeah we're going to be creating these designs i'm going to title it skyscraper or something like that <laughs> but yeah you can see we can use them as t-shirt designs or whatever you want so let's begin so here we are in a new window and straight off what I've done is I've created another layer I just made a rectangle um, and these are the settings align strip to the outside I just want to get rid of the inner um, color because I don't want to have that I want to have this free so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lock this layer and I'm going to work on the layer below. What this will do is, is this layer on top is going to block all the spill offs. So all I'll be seeing is everything in the middle, provided it doesn't go outside the border. So yeah, let's begin. First thing I want to do is create the skyscrapers. So I'm going to use the line tool and then uh, holding shift i'm going to drag down and that is a very big very fat <laughs> line i'm going to reduce that to about five okay five is a little bit too small i see 16 that's good so now what i'm going to do is copy this Control c and paste it right on top of the thing i copied which is Control f so now you see we have two identical but they are copied and it's called copied and pasted over the previous so i'm going to press a which is my direct selection tool and i'm going to hold this top angle point and bring it down holding shift so it can remain locked to the center what i'm going to do with this one is click it and increase the um width size and that makes it bigger we're going to copy this again and paste it over itself ctrl c ctrl f press a select the top part and bring this down as you can see you can do this however you want it's just a design you don't have to be extremely perfect or make it do whatever you want but this is basically how it's done all right so i'm going to increase this to 80 and we have something like this now what we could do is select this Control G to group them all. Create a couple more. For this, I'm just going to create three. Select all three and align them so they are evenly spaced. And let's make sure they are all centered. So now what we are going to do is play around with them so they look different. So I'm just going to ungroup them. And then I'm going to get rid of that one. Select this one, ungroup it. I'm going to get rid of, uh, you know what, let's do this, let's do this, let's select this layer, bring it to the front, oh, oops, bring to front so it's on top of all the other layers, press A, bring this down, holding shift, and I'm going to make this even fatter. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to select that and I'm going to make this uh, 80, okay, nope, 100, that's good. So what I'm going to do now is group them, uh, are they all grouped, okay, now we're going to evenly distribute them again, okay, that's pretty good, align them to the bottom and voila. I'm just going to do that again because I am not satisfied that that worked out well. Okay, it's evenly aligned. So now I'm going to group everything and bring it to the center. Okay, so now they look red squares and all. <laughs> but what really makes it look like a building or some skyscraper is by the addition of doors. And I'm going to be using square, white color get rid of the stroke and yeah create our doors 
so let's make it something like this something like that should be good enough I'm just going to copy this over to the other places okay so now oh I forgot you have to ungroup these right and then work on them individually so this I'm going to highlight both of them holding shift and clicking on the layers and then horizontal and bottom so it's going to look something like this now I can group this and I'm going to do this for the other one okay so now that we've done all that what I want to do is align them all to the bottom and evenly distribute them again because they keep moving now I'm going to highlight everything ctrl G to group them and once again bring it to the center and then now that they are all selected next thing to do is to play with the perspective but before we do that we want to create the bottom or the ground or the floor and for that I'm just going to make a simple square and drag it like so and a little bit up so that okay so we're going to change the color to black and that's pretty good now we're going to select everything go to objects okay so before you continue from here it's always nice to have saves especially when you're so what we're going to do is just hold alt click and drag so we have this saved up so we can work on this non-destructively because we have a backup so now that we've done that we're going to come back here select everything objects path outline stroke and that makes it so that everything now has have strokes everything now sorry is outlined so they are all squares and we can work with them easily so what i'm going to do now is select everything and join sorry merge yeah merge now that we've done that we're going to select it um where's my scissors tool click on the knife and then we're going to try as our best to cut it in the center holding shift and alt I'm going to click and drag and drag it all the way down so what have what I have successfully done hopefully successfully <laughs> is I have split this into two different parts so now if I click it what so so after doing that you have to ungroup it which is what I did while I was talking after ungrouping it you can see that they are both split into different halves so now that we've done that holding shift control and i is going to bring up the perspective tool and to be able to arrange them we're going to have to click on right click on this um icon you have the perspective group tool what you're going to select is the perspective selection tool now that you've selected that you see this little icon here whichever box is there is the box that is the plane that whatever you are trying to align is going to be aligned to let me explain that by simply demonstrating so if i click the right if i click if i hover over this remember we've cut it into two so there are two separate halves if i hover over if i hover over wow <laughs> if i hover over this half and i click it it's going to align itself to the right because the right is selected here ctrl z to go back if i do that to the left it's going to align itself to the left and that is what we want so we want to align this part to the left and this part to the right so what we do now is select bring it to the middle somewhere around there it doesn't have to be perfect but that's good enough do the same thing for the other one oops forgot to change that remember guys you have to change this to right select this and put it like so now what we want to do is make sure it is properly aligned to the perspective grid so we click on this point here and we can actually drag it down to match the line and then click on this point drag it to match the line and not every design or everything you're going to use to um, work on using the perspective grid has to merge with these lines you can decide to make it like this it's however you choose but just to make things simple I'm going to align them to the edges I'm going to do the same thing for this one and bring that down bring this to the back 
and make sure this is well aligned click off it to see if everything looks okay holding shift ctrl and i will take away the perspective grid and i'm doing that so i can see if this is looking good as you can see there is a little line in the middle and i do not want that so i'm going to hold shift ctrl i again and this time i'm going to manually because before i was using shift i should have said that <laughs> i was using shift holding shift and moving this will ensure that it aligns to any one of the axes automatically but you could also just move it around by yourself so what i want to do now is to drag this a little bit more to the right or sorry to the left so it overlaps that way i don't get that issue and i can just bring this to the back some more and let's do the same thing to this and that's good enough now you can see the top is having issues what I'm going to do is just correct that and bring this down a bit. You still have any issues? Let's see if we move this up. Okay. Still having slight issues. Let's drag this down a bit more. Okay, so unfortunately this is having issues so what i could do instead of going through all that hassle is just use the direct selection tool select these parts holding shift and clicking on these parts what i'm going to do now is try and you know what let's just select one point try and connect it like so and we're going to do that for every other point that is not join well so select this point and what do you do turn that off so in a bit more and like so do the same thing for this bottom half like so and do the same thing for this click drag all done with the direct selection tool and bam here we have it beautiful so the next step is create a circle from the center holding shift and alt from the center you create a circle like so what you want to do is want to turn that off select all this ctrl g to group arrange bring to front let's change this color to white and you see what i'm doing in a bit you can't see it now obviously bring this up and bam we have that now what i want to do is shrink this circle a little bit more so it looks like this and there you go so what you want to do now is once again hit your direct selection tool select these squares at the bottom and I want to drag them down like so I then select all the squares okay so now that we've done that what we have is this looking like so so what I want to do now is select the circle ctrl C ctrl F right click bring to front change it to stroke increase that to five points and we're almost there next thing i want to do is <coughs> press p to bring out the pen tool click on this holding shift drag all the way down to the bottom press v p do the same thing for the other side all the way down to the bottom vp select that and join it then select this and join it and then what we want to do is simply switch that to a color like so and voila obviously it's not well aligned but that's something we should be able to fix easily with the direct selection tool just select these parts 
zoom in well control y to be able to see the lines well and just drag it till it matches you can do the same thing for the other side and that is that control y to come back to your normal view so the next step now is the rays or are the rays rather so we just take our line tool in the center holding shift drag up change the stroke to black increase that to about five and okay five isn't big enough so let's increase that to 10 make sure that is sitting pretty zoom in is that good enough let's align this properly to the center and then the next step is just to do this for all sides so i'm just going to select this bring it over here change the angle to 180 then alt drag it to the other side and we have them on both sides what i like to do for this is select this one select the circle align it so it comes to this other side align it so it comes to this side and then select it and then count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve seems good enough do the same thing for this one all I'm just doing is so that the two of them are evenly spaced out. I'm sure there are better ways to do this, but this is just how I like to do it. Or how I know how to. <laughs> so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we have both of them well spaced out. Next thing I want to do is select. Oh, nope. Okay. Select this Alt and drag somewhere around here. Change that to 60 no 30 okay so we'll bring this over to this side ctrl c ctrl f shift and move it over to the other side and then what i want to do is object transform reflect horizontal vertical pretty much the same effect click ok select two and for the same thing like before do this do this one oops click this one two three four five do the same thing for this do this do this one two three four five and look at that look at that are we missing anything else from the original design okay the bottom ones so what we could do now is select this and select this ctrl g to group them ctrl c ctrl f object transform reflect horizontal okay and what we want to do now is click on this right um shift click on the circle shift click on this bring it to the bottom and that is good yo and we have this so you can come back here and we can see maybe the alignment um the paths themselves are looking a bit stompier but it's pretty much the same design and that is that now we can just select everything ctrl g come over here merge it all oh sorry um objects expand everything Select everything and merge. And yeah, that's it. This is everything done. We went from turning this into a perspective object and somehow made a design which you can use at any point you want to create a poster. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot from today's video. If anything, the major takeaway here is how to use the perspective tool. Remember, holding shift, control and I brings it up. 
selecting your perspective selection tool and choosing the side you want to work with just helps you align that well and if i do the same thing for the other side so i have to go back for this the same for the other side it aligns itself to the other side and that's basically how the perspective tool works thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace